Hello and welcome to Herndon Live. I'm Jack Norcross alongside Mark Seaman and Emily Yen. Uh, we have, uh, we're going to be following the Hannah Graham case today, a very interesting case. Let's take a look at uh, what we know so far in the investigation. Um, so far, right and we now, uh, Hannah Graham is a missing UVA student, uh, which is in Charlottesville, Virginia. She was last seen September 13th at around 1.45 a.m. She went to high school very locally in Alexandria, and uh, residents, volunteers, police officers have all been searching uh, in Charlottesville for clues. Hannah Graham was a great athlete, Mark. She did so much for her community. Um, do you think that's interesting that, uh, that she went missing and not someone else who might have been a little bit more uh, careless? Um, well, it depends. Um, you could see that she was uh, at around two in the morning. It was a city. She was by herself, and um, it depends. It again, it depends. Um, it, it is it, it. It's unknown what she was doing prior to her um, disappearance. Um, obviously, she was out. It doesn't know if she was drinking or if she was doing anything else. Um, yeah, interesting points that you bring out. It's a little unclear what happened because. They're looking, th what police are doing is they're looking at all of these uh, security footage and they're seeing, you know, Hannah Graham at, you know, 12 a.m., you know, 1 a.m., leading up to 1.45 a.m. That's the last time someone uh, states that they saw her in a bar, actually. And um, I want to take a look now because her, pa uh, everyone has been searching. She's been gone, like we said, September 13th. Today is September 26th. This is almost the, she almost has been missing for two weeks and we have not, uh, really have seen anything except we're going to talk about also the man who has been caught and is now in jail. But I first want to take a look at what the parents uh, said. We have the clip on the next um, uh, on the next page. Let's take a look at that now. All right. It looks like we do not have the clip in the uh, system. Let's uh, go ahead and let's go back uh, a slide to a little bit. All right. Well, what what basically to summarize what the parents said. These parents are pleading. At first, Mark, we know that they didn't want to be known to the public. They did not want to really reveal themselves. They wouldn't want to do an interview. Finally, they came out and said something. Do you think that made a difference in catching this man who we'll talk about in one moment? Um, well, possibly, yes, because it's like we've seen that numerous times pe parents or relatives or even friends sometimes have a very hard time discussing the disappearance of someone they loved and um, it could be that their, it, that their interview may have helped catch uh, the abductor right here. Um, as to what extent, we don't know. Mm -hmm. So um, we know that Charlottesville is not a huge area. I've been there many times. I mean, it's a population of 100,000, 200,000 people. Um, so it's not a huge area. Do you think that it's interesting that's coming from such a small area where everyone kind of feels very close compared to a big city such as, you know, New York, D.C., Los Angeles. Uh, do I find it strange? Um, yes and no, because even though there are, even though there are many, like, abductions in major cities such as New York, Los Angeles, Detroit, etc., um, a lot of these abductions can often take place in kind of out-of-the-way towns such as Charlottesville. Um, yeah, and that, that, that yes, thing. and it's like, I find it that it's like a majority of these cases often tend to take place in small towns that aren't, re they really don't have a large population where everyone tends to know each other. Um, it's often the case with abductions, murders, etc. Mm -hmm. Emily, I want to bring you in now because I think, and I think that I wanted to bring you in especially because I think that you have a different perspective as a female to this case. Do you think Hannah Graham was doing the right thing? Should she have been with a partner maybe to prevent this from happening in the first place? Well, she was a college student. It's not uncommon for um, students to be out this late, either mm -hmm. studying. Um, as you mentioned though, she was at a bar. But, um, <clears throat> and as you mentioned before, no matter how small the area is, you're always, especially women, you're in danger. Um, it, the size of the city doesn't matter. Um, there's always going to be predators out there who are watching, and mm -hmm. you always need to make sure that you have someone with you at all times, especially at that late in the evening. In the evening, which is kind of strange, but um, but you always have to make sure that you're that you have protection with you. Um, you have something to defend yourself with, 
And um, like I said, it's not uncommon for college students to be out this late, um, but it's just, it's strange that she was out by herself. All right, yeah, very interesting point. Let's talk about the man who they caught. So in uh, the last few days, actually, police were able to track down Jesse Matthews, and they were gonna charge him with the alleged kidnap of Hannah Graham. And uh, uh, two days ago, sorry, typo, he was caught uh, sleeping in a tent on a beach near Galveston, Texas and he will be traveling back to Charlottesville so that he can be questioned more there. Mark, is it unusual for people who may be suspicious uh, to be traveled to somewhere totally different, even in foreign countries, maybe? And I think it was interesting that he was hiding in a tent, kind of making him stand out a little. Do you think uh, he was really trying hard? Um, most likely, yes, because usually when these people are, are suspected of crimes, or they they're they're guilty of crimes. They often tend to flee or pretend that this never happened. For example, you said that he was on a beach in near Galveston, Texas, and that is close to the Mexican border. Uh, Galveston, Texas. No, it doesn't touch the. Uh, it's on the water. Okay. Well, um, usually it could have been he could have been caught sleeping in a tent, but it, he could have been with a camping. He could have been disguised as a camping group. He mm -hmm. could have been disguised simply as someone sleeping in, uh, near the beach. Um, it, um, yes. Could be a variety of things. Yes. And I, I don't know much about this case, but I find it strange that he went all the way to Texas. How did they tie him back to the case? Yeah, it's, uh, it's very uh, interesting. And I think that he was first caught actually for driving excessively. He went to the police station in Charlottesville and he was talking, he wanted to speak to an attorney and he was kind of a little bit of a suspect in the first place. And then after that, um, police saw him leaving the police station, speeding off, and then a warrant was out for his um, for excessive uh, driving. So that was um, pretty interesting. But Mark, what is another thing that we could do to make sure things like this don't happen? And what are things, do you think the um, that the Charlottesville police station has been doing the right thing to reach out to everyone in the community asking for them to search for any evidence of Hannah Graham? Uh, yes, um, for starters, I'm going to answer your question on things to help prevent this. Yes, um, of course. Uh, what Emily said, try not to be alone, especially if it's out in the middle of the night. There are always predators around, and you always want to have some kind of company. And it's like, it does seem silly when parents seem overprotective, saying, I want to make sure where you're going, don't go alone. But it does help. And um, to answer your question, um, they've been doing the right thing because, as you said before, this is a very small community comparatively. And it's like, again, it's where everyone knows each other. And it was since, since Hannah Graham was a very popular, again, athlete, mm -hmm. um, it does seem appropriate that a lot of people would know about her and that it would seem appropriate that the police would ask for details and mm -hmm. clues. Good. Well, Emily and Mark, thank you so much. And Mark, now you have the weather for us. Thank you, Mark. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right, I'm with you with the weekend weather, and for most of us, we have a very long weekend full of weather, so let's get started. Okay? Um, for starters, we right now, it is about partly cloudy at about 73 degrees, so it's been warming up over the past couple of days. Um, but later tonight, it's going to start cooling down. Again, it's going to stay partly cloudy, and usually when it gets around 7 to 9, it'll really drop down to the, to the high 60s, and then around 9, the skies will clear up, but the temperatures will also drop. It'll remain about mostly clear. Tomorrow morning, it will be sunny, which means the sun's going to be beaming down on us, but unfortunately, the temperature will drop to the mid-50s, which, again, brings us back down to that cold front. Um, but later on in the weekend, we'll be ex experiencing higher, much higher weather, almost summer-like weather, with 80 degrees at the highest on Saturday, sunny, and an even higher temperature of 81 degrees on Sunday, but it will be partly, partly cloudy. So overall this weekend, we can be expecting mostly sun, usually around 77-something degree temperatures, and some showers that could happen in these couple of days. And... Um, Yes, and um, again, the average temperature 77 degrees, mostly sunny, but there could be a couple of isolated s scattered thunderstorms around the area. And that'll be important to look at, Mark, in uh, the next coming uh, weeks. Mark, thank you so much for the weather. Thank you. Now, with just a few days passing since a new Vine video had surfaced across the internet, cheerleader members of a certain community uh, were um, 
uh, posted a video and some adults found this video provocative and contacted the school. But an important lesson should be learned here and I discussed it with Emily Yen and Paula Cass. Right, let's take a look. All right, and I am now joined by Paula Cassere and Emily Yen. Thank you so much. And uh, Paula Cassere is obviously the mother of Haley and Allie Cassere, and she has a very strong opinion on our topic, like I mentioned, which is um, this interesting vine that was posted uh, uh, to Vine, and it shows the cheerleaders in uh, what some may call a provocative dance with um, some provocative music in the gr uh, background. And it's not just about the dance moves they were doing. It's, a, it's also a lesson that many can learn from of how things that stay on, uh, things that are posted to social media stay there. And I know, uh, Ms. Cassidy, you brought up a very big point about this. What do you want to say to children who don't really understand the concept? Because I know they, even though they took the vine down, you were still able to find it after it was taken down, which I thought was quite interesting. I was able to see it. Um, I didn't want to comment without seeing it. I think that what we need to realize in the world of the internet that whatever we put out there is going to follow us no matter what. You may think it's gone, but it isn't. And that the ages that um, the people in high school, in colleges now, they aren't thinking long term and they need to be thinking long term that when you put something up there it's up there for the whole world to see and if it's out there anyone can use it for whatever reason. For, take a look at this first quote it says um, the uh, Herndon people who is an adult who supervises the cheerleaders uh, don't believe that they advocate the girls representing uh, like that in this way click the vine to see why disgusting and their media being made fun of in a major way is this the type of reaction we want to see on Facebook from parents on all social media levels, Ms. Cassidy? Do we want to see, should parents be encouraging it to almost be showing, being it uh, viewed more times? Do you think that's the right thing no, to do? No, I, I don't think it's beneficial at all. Um, and again, it goes back to once it's out there, people can do whatever they want, however they want, say whatever they want, but I don't see it as helpful at all, at all. And Emily, what do you think that uh, this, something like this, and we're going to look at some of the more comments that were commented. This was the post. There was comments below that. What do you think that the, uh, this, just this post in general, had effect on the cheerleaders who were in the video? Well, it's, it's easy to say that no parent or adult would want to see kids behaving like this. I mean, they're not used to it. And we can see um, that, that there's concern that they're being made fun of. At the bottom, they're being made fun of in a major way. Mm -hmm. I mean, but I mean, it's kind of silly to show it or include the link to it if um, that's just giving it more publicity, honestly. Mm -hmm. but, um, but these parents, they do, they do, they are concerned. That's, that's I mean, these, um, we, us, we have to realize that as kids, that they are concerned. They're not trying to be harmful. They're just, I mean, it, it is, kind of cruel, but it's, um, it's, I guess, their way of trying to teach us a lesson. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at the next one, and this one kind of blames the ad administrators. School has no jurisdiction over them unless their poor behavior at an event or tweeted from school. Don't think this is, but it might be a good time for the, uh, the cheerleader uh, coach, I'm assuming, to get involved since the girls posted a representation shout out. Should parents be concerned about what their punishment is? I know other comments, I've read the post, said, you know, they should be suspended or something. Uh, is it the parents, uh, and I will mention this mom is not a cheer mom, you know, she's probably, uh, she's an outsider looking in. You think it's her job to tell the school what to do and what punishments need to be taken, Ms. Cassidy? I think it's easy to stand in judgment when you're not involved. Um, again, I don't think that this was intended to be anything other than just fun. Um, as far as the punishment goes, if, if, if this group of young women have signed something, right. as far as their um, ethics of the way they're supposed to behave, so um, I almost feel like the parents should come up with the disciplinary in action versus the school because it wasn't a school function. It, it looked like to me it was a private function. Okay, let's take a look at the next comment. And uh, we're starting to see, it, it, it was kind of pretty low key at first. I mean, maybe it wasn't the best choice to share the video in the first place. But um, um, let's just take, I know the dance team pulled the same crap at one of the football games last year and the repercussions were pretty spot on. Consequences for dumb aid posting seems pretty spot on with this as well. This 
this language is pretty strong for considering they're teenagers. I know this language is unfortunately thrown around here and there in high school or whatever, but should parents be saying these to teenagers? Uh, Emily, what do you think about this? Well, I mean, no, obviously not. Um, our generation is very familiar with the language, but um, for us, we're all very sensitive, believe it or not, towards what adults think of us. Um, this is, it really hits home uh, to, to the to teenagers specifically when I say that, because um, no, no student ever really wants to be um, sort of looked down on by, by someone else. That's just a natural thing. But um, like I said, this language, it's, it's harsh. I mean, it's a little bit much for a teenager. And I understand that they did mention the, the uh, dance team. And it's true, but I mean, it's just, uh, it's just unfortunate that this one had to be, um, it had to become so viral so quickly, or else it wouldn't have gotten so much attention and it mm -hmm. wouldn't have been such a large deal. All right, well, this, this, this next uh, comment is directed toward the parents of these children. And, oh, I, we can go back for a second, okay. It says, be a parent, allowing not, is not being a parent. We are leaders of these children and we need to act like it. Setting limits and following up with discipline goes a long way to creating ladies, not hoes. It's disgusting that certain groups at the school have leaders who have the girls dance like hoes at part of their routine. Shame on those leaders, you're not getting my daughters. Should the mom be parenting uh, the other children? Ms. Kasserick. I would say absolutely not. I Let's move over to the language, and I know Ms. Cassidy touched on this, but the language has a pretty powerful effect. It catches your attention when reading it. It kind of takes a turn in this kind of conversation. What effect do you think the language has on this? Parenting, not my position to say anything, right. but um, I know that parents have, or leaders or teachers, they have their way of um, restricting their children or teaching their kids a lesson. Um, if you treat your, your kid like this, not just your kid, but these girls that you don't even know, if you treat them with this kind of language, it's, it's not helpful. I mean, these girls, if you dug more deep into it, you would know that they're already devastated. I mean, I, I would be upset if, if I had a daughter and she did something like this, but it's, um, it's just, you, they, they already learned from their lesson, I guess, mm -hmm. and this kind of language does not. Pushes it a little bit more. Yes. Kind of. It's, it's like I, you said, it's bullying. And this last comment that we have here is from a mom who actually has a daughter on the um, cheer team. Let's take a look at that comment right now. Um, it says, um, uh, Miss Mom One, you say you don't know the girl, but you certainly don't have any trouble calling them names and others at school names and bullying them. I think you should be just as ashamed of your behavior calling girls you don't like hoes because they are playing around at a sleepover. I know the band parents slash kids are so perfect, but you need to keep it to yourself. As you and others pointed out, what you put on the internet stays there. Stop bullying. Ms. Castro, do you think this was the right comment to respond to this? Should he, she have commented at all or was this, or did someone need to step in here? I always am the type of person that I like to confront the elephant in the room right. to clear the air. Mm -hmm. That's just just my personality, and apparent, apparently mom number three feels the same way as I do. Yes, I mean, it was completely uncalled for. And as parents, we need to realize that we can't put on rose-colored glasses and think our children aren't going to misbehave or do something they shouldn't do. Right. It's part of the learning process. And calling names and being hurtful is not going to help in any way. I think the lesson that needs to be learned here is when you put something on the internet, it will be there forever. And when you start doing those college applications and looking for jobs, mm -hmm. employers and schools can pull it up and see it. Right, right. Emily, what do you think? Uh, we hear we have TA lessons, we have many different uh, lessons that mention, you know, don't bully, don't cyber bully. Cyber bully is a real big one, and we've seen it. We've definitely talked about it today and how it is um, so present but so um, easy to do. What do you think, this is kind of a perfect example of what you might see a kids do. Think it's strange that parents are doing the same thing. Well, to play devil's advocate, mm -hmm. um, mom number one was just um, backing herself up. Her, her beliefs, that's what, how she believes, that's the type of language she uses. I mean, that's just, that's her way of, of teaching her kids. But. Um, not sure what's going on, but but um, that that's just we can't really judge a parent by the way that she she I mean it's 
it seems wrong to us, but if it works for her, it works for her. Um, but I mean, I'm just saying we can't really, um, I, I definitely admire mom number three for um, standing up for these girls. They needed it, definitely, especially when- they Right. All right, well, Miss Casseray and Emily, thank you so much for talking to us, and uh, we're now send it back to the desk. That's true. <laughs> All right, and we're back right now. Casey is dying over oh, here, <laughs> but that's okay. Sorry, I don't know if you caught us, but we were just talking about homecoming. I know, yeah. it is coming up just <laughs> around the corner, and uh, Casey, coughing Casey, obviously, hey. is joining us right now. Hey, oh, we have some tape right here. <laughs> Sorry, we had to hang the sign, to be honest, <laughs> but that's okay. Shh. Um, but um, anyway, um, Casey, now I know you, I've been talking to some people and you've been talking to some people and I know right. everyone on the staff has been talking to some people about what is the best way to reject someone from right. coming. Some people, you know, may be a little dodo head okay, <laughs> and they try uh, to ask you to ask a girl to homecoming, but they might just Doesn't not be into so the well. guy. What, like what do you do? What do you do? Well, I've heard various answers. Um, I've heard of how guys have gotten turned down, but I've also heard of how girls would, or getting ready to turn guys down who they think are going to ask them. Mm. Um, some of the things that the guys I talked to said um, were that one girl, he asked her and she said yes in the moment, and then like half an hour later she texted him and she was like, I'm not going to homecoming with you. And a part of me thinks that's because of all the pressure of like proposals and stuff like that. Yeah. But it's also- Everyone's around and they're like, <laughs> Yeah, oh you know, yeah. just like oh, the worst ones are the cafeteria ones where like where, oh, everyone is around. I know. Yes, I feel so bad because I've seen people get rejected in those cafeteria <laughs> moments, and it's yeah. just like Aw. it's stressful though. But I mean, like, if, that's hard. I understand if you don't want to go, you don't want to go. That takes guts though to yeah. say you're going with someone and then go text them back saying it's not just happening. Kidding. Yeah, yeah, and then also um, from some girls, they said the best way that they feel to turn someone down. I've heard honesty, like saying, sorry, I really don't want to go with you. Or also I've heard just pretend that you already have a date, and then when you show up at the dance, tell them that your date bailed on you. Mm. So yeah, that they're sick. That yeah. Works, so. yeah. That, that, that's actually an interesting I mean, one. it's smart, but, but that's there has really, to be a better like, but way. That, that's like, that's yeah. awkward for the guy, let's be honest. Yeah, too. it is. I mean, you're not, you're not if, if, um, um, if I ask Emily, no, I'm not going to ask you, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> just kidding. And, and, and Emily goes, Oh, sorry, I'm going with a Bobby. And I go, oh, okay, you know. And then, <laughs> then of course, I'll probably go home and stalk Bobby in your Twitter feed and look yeah, for pictures, definitely. you know, because don't with social media now, their, everyone yeah. posts there. Just homecoming. don't humiliate the boy. That's the, what my two cents would be. Don't, like, if it's like a very grand gesture, like, I mean, in the moment, you don't say yes or whatever. Like, you can act surprised and happy or, like, give them a hug and w whisper in their ear, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do that. Just just make it very... <laughs> 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 no, that, that's cruel. Don't, don't do that. Just just try to... <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Just, you don't want to be, like, in front of everyone, no. But, yeah. like, you don't want to be, like... Oh yeah, and, but then no, like you don't want to like lead them on and yeah, and you want to be very straightforward. And I actually think one of the best ones I heard was that if you a lot of girls like with all the all the hype for like these proposals that people are doing, someone is bound to know, and usually the girl knows right, before right, right. they're going to get asked. Yes, like the, her usually friends will tell her. There's connections. And yeah, and if you know ahead of time, like don't avoid the guy, don't run away, just like be very straightforward and maybe send them a text like saying. You know, if this is about homecoming, like I'm really not interested. Like shut it down early, yeah, so that so neither of you are disappointed. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Guy. That that's actually yeah. great advice. Now, how how close should you be with the person? You don't want to be like their best friend. That's a girl because that can be a little awkward. You know, if the night turns out awful. You know, <laughs> should you be like a person that? Oh, I've seen you in the cafeteria before homecoming. <laughs> that's true. You know, that's there's that happens you know, too. I actually feel like it's probably better to go with one of your close friends because like if you guys have the expectation of like friendship, then there's no hard feelings. Like if you right, right, is right. It, mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you can bond with them and maybe like if you're not enjoying the dance, then talk about how you're not enjoying the dance. Like I would say someone who's in your circle. Don't go out of your way to ask someone that you don't know. Someone that like if you're not super close to them but you want to ask them, don't I mean like well, first, kind of get like a sort of approval from the friends, yeah. definitely. Like you have to double check with the friends first to make sure it's okay. But um, or that's what I would think you yeah. should do. But um, mm. 
I yeah, mean, that's great advice. You want to make sure you text like a friend or like to, a close friend in there. To make and sure, trust like, me, the friends will <laughs> help you the most. If you're a yeah. guy and you want to ask your girl, you have to talk to her friends about what she likes, um, when to do it, her schedule, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Right. That's yeah, and you have to do a little bit of stalking. Definitely. You have to yeah, track do. them down, like kind of find out where they'll yeah, be. Yeah, you have at to find out time. where they're gonna be and yeah. when. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of work that goes into I it. I know. But now, a what lot of you, friends help. Now, what do you think? So, now we've seen a lot of obviously homecoming or proposals, and I feel like they've been happening earlier this year. Oh, yeah, you know, it was way so before early. than you know what normally they're setting a high standards. Happened, um, they're last setting the year, bar. but what do you think? What's some of the best ones that we've seen? Well. One of my friends um, asked this girl um, t like two days ago, and it was really cute because he's on the football team and she plays volleyball. So he had like a football and a volleyball, and he wrote like H on the football and then C on the volleyball. That's nice. Yeah, That's and he cool. just like met her in the parking lot with like flowers and stuff. And I thought that was cute. Like, I don't think you have to, it has to be so grand. Like, you mm -hmm. don't have to go yeah. out of your way. Right. Yeah. And it makes it easier on the girl or, like, whoever's being asked. Oh, definitely. Right. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, I mean, most, a lot of girls, like, you see their Twitter's like, oh, hashtag goals of, like, the super yeah, grand Yeah, and, like, gesture. I mean, proposals. There's a whole Twitter account. I'm like, okay. I don't know. Nice. I think, I Some think it's Some of them are just, lame, I'm just saying. I mean, yeah. if it was too, like, like, big, I mean, I don't know how I would feel about it, you know? Mm -hmm. And just, like, the little things, they're nice. I mean, right. it's the night that's supposed to be special and not the proposal. It's not like you're getting married. It's just a dance. Yeah, yeah that's a good point, you know? Yeah, it's not as high, you know, class and not as much pressure. But it takes yeah. a lot of pressure for the guy because, obviously, yeah, I mean, I don't know when you would do it when there was no one around, you know? Because some people do it, like, after school. Like, I know some people mm -hmm. did it after school in the parking lot. Today. Yeah. I saw a few there. So, you know, there's different... Mm -hmm ways and strategies you know right. you have to strategically plan it out and do you yeah. think that if you're dating someone do you think there's more pressure on you to do something bigger Less you think um, to, that's to actually, do something that's a tough one i don't know because i feel like if you expect them to ask you to homecoming anyway then you want it to be like there's to be something special about it mm -hmm. like that's if they're just true. like hey like hc let's go i'd be like okay <laughs> No. Yeah. No. <laughs> NT, no thanks. No, no, yeah. <laughs> okay, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Little but, but, I mean, uh, if you're if you're in a relationship with someone, I mean, you you know the person. Do something that's more personal. It doesn't have to be like cheesy or cute. It can be you know personal or something. Right. Like, yeah. How should you find out what group you should go in? Because you know you might have like lots of different oh, friends, God. and one I so and so, so might not be friends with so and so, but you like both of them. <sighs> what group do you go in? You know, how do you have to come to a consensus? Because if Emily, Emily and Bobby, you know, they have uh, Bobby has his <laughs> friends and Emily has her friends. You know, how do you? You have to. You obviously have to go together because why would you ask her then? Yeah, mm -hmm. I feel like there's no right answer to this question because this is going to be my fourth homecoming. Every year that I've gone to homecoming, there's always been a conflict with like groups because my friends always end up in different groups and I always end up with people that I don't know that well, but like right. some that I do. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's really hard, but like I would say definitely target your closest friends and try and yeah. go with them because, you know, that makes it easier. Last year I was exchanging groups till the last, I'm not kidding, hour. I yeah. know. It's kind of like a trade. I don't know how do you describe it, but it's kind of like. I mean, usually yeah. the tradition that I'm familiar with, this would only be my second homecoming, but from what I know, it's the boys, they need to have their friends because if the boys don't have their really friends, quiet. they're going to be really <laughs> awkward true. and all the girls are going to be, you know, giggling or whatever, yeah. playing oh, at, the after party, <laughs> at the after party. <laughs> so the boys it. need to make sure that they have their guys with them. So the, the ritual that I'm used to is the boys, the girls go with the boys. And then usually if you're in the same circles, then you shouldn't have a problem with like girlfriends and that right. kind of stuff. Your circle should align. You're so possible. You should be like familiar with the people. It's not like you're gonna be complete strangers, you know? Yeah. 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 That's good. Yeah, well, good. Casey, thank you for the homecoming chat. But why yeah. don't you tell us about you just um, interviewed mm, almost the entire football team. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and there's yeah, so part one of uh, my football team interviews is going to be played today. I'm still conducting interviews. I have one more interview. I'm okay. gonna interview the coach. Um, but most of the players are just telling me like what they think the season will hold for them. Uh, what they're really looking forward to, and how the change in coaching has really affected them as a team. Yeah. All right, so, interesting. Yeah. And one more program note that we would uh, like to announce is that next week, next or two weeks, I'm sorry, Friday at 5, we'll be uh, live along uh, the parade route, which will be the next following morning, which would be exciting. Mm -hmm. And we will be there, and we'll talk. A, it'll be a homecoming-themed um, show. Oh, so yeah, that fun. Should be fun. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at Casey's uh, great segment, uh, part one, <laughs> uh, with the football yeah. players. Let's take a look.
My name is Casey Molina. I'm here with Ryan McLaughlin, who's the quarterback of the Herndon High School football team. So Ryan, um, what do you look for in terms of vision on the field? Um, I'm always surveying the field on each play, looking for certain things that we could uh, do better at on each play that we do. Um, anything that I see, I let coach know, and then that could impact how we uh, run our offense the next series and our success on the field. Awesome. And do you feel like the most pressure is on you as a quarterback to execute plays? I think it is, yeah, because um, the teammates on the team look for me uh, when things go wrong on the field. So um, I just do my best to do what I can and help others guy out when they need it whenever possible. And what is the most helpful thing that you would say your teammates do for you on the field or could do for you in order to make your job easier? Um, definitely the guys are all supporting. So when anything goes wrong, they're the first ones there to pick you up and the first ones there to tell you that you just got to keep working hard and eventually go right. So I'm lucky to have a good group of guys around me. And, uh, yeah. That's awesome. And so what is your outlook for the season this year? Do you feel like it's going to be a better season than last year? or? Yeah, I think we're definitely ready to surprise some people this year. Um, definitely the group of guys we have this year as seniors. Uh, just big big expectations uh, all around, and I'm uh, just looking forward to uh, getting at it. All right, thank you so much. Yeah. I'm here with the left and right tackle, Matt Conkayas and Troy Brunson. So, the job of the tackles is pretty much to keep the defense of the other team off your quarterback. Um, do you find most teams send a, or tend to send a quick defense, or do they aim to overpower you with bigger players? Usually they have the DN, which is, I guess, a bigger guy, but they also, the, they can be a big guy that has some speed, too, so you never know yeah. what's going to come. Do you guys practice, like, certain maneuvers in practice? Uh, we go over pass setting, which is not so much firing off the ball, but just making sure that no one gets past you. Right. And then we'll have, like, one-on-one -on -one drills to really work on, like, someone rushing and trying to get there as fast as possible. Okay, awesome. And do you think the season is going to be different from last season? Yeah, we all, we all hope to be better. We already started off a little better, so yeah. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, congrats on you guys' first win. Thank you. Yeah. And why, so you guys, do you think it's a level of work ethic that you put in an off season that's going to make you better? Or do you think you have better chemistry as a team? Is it the coach? I think it has a lot to do with the coaching. The off season definitely helps, but the way the offense is run this year is totally different than what we've had. It's similar in some aspects, but just the way the plays are run, it's like a better chemistry between the players and everyone else. Yeah. It's easier to get your job done correctly without having to memorize more stuff. Right, right. Okay. And what are you most looking forward to this season? Some games this <laughs> Yeah. Having a better season, just not going one and nine again. So I'm here with two of the wide receivers, Devin Goldsby and Connor Johnson. So the wide receivers have to be quick, fast, and have a lot of endurance. Um, I understand you guys have routes to run for each play. Can you describe a route that you would run? Um, we have crossing routes where Connor and I will cross and use every open line we'll pick and Can we kind of free each other up with yeah. uh, our different spacing and such. So endurance is a huge aspect of being a wide receiver. Um, how important is it for you guys to have a lot of endurance and be able to like, keep running routes? Well, it's uh, very paramount because uh, we we have to be able to perform the same every same timing every uh, play. So we can't uh, in order not to mess up everybody else's job. Right. Yeah, we do endurance by conditioning and practice, so we're always prepared for the games. So is time is timing these routes a huge aspect of the entire play, or is it kind of like when you just see an opening, do you just yeah? Like, timing is everything. You run a route different. Um, based on how the defenders lined up on you, but timing is definitely everything. And do you think the season is going to be different from last season? Extremely different. It's true. Yeah? Why do you say that? Um, we have a whole new style of offense that uh, we're liking a lot better than last year's. And uh, we're having a lot of guys step up and having a pretty hard lift in the summer session. Okay. Extremely strong senior class, too. Yeah. Right. Okay. So what kinds of things did you guys do in off-season to prepare you? Uh, well, we came to the school about three or four times a week and 
uh, in the morning, lifting, ran, and had a lot of uh, just all around lifting, and getting very good sessions. Okay. Stronger. All right. And what are you guys most looking forward to this season? South Lake and South Lake. Okay, so I'm here with Jack Buma and Fawad Rahimyar, who are the other two wide receivers on Herndon's football team. So, as wide receivers, what would you say is the most important part of your job? Um, I'd probably say having good hands, being able to catch the ball is probably one of the biggest aspects. Right. And what about you? Uh, I would say uh, route running okay. and uh, uh, blocking are also key, key aspects in our offense. You know, you always want to learn when your route's right to, you know, you know, make a move over the defenders or free someone else up and, uh, you know, uh, get on your block so, you know, the other running backs can uh, get around you. Right. Okay. So I kind of want to touch on route running a little bit more. Um, what kind of cues do you look for when you're thinking about, like, what routes to run? Like, what do you look for in order to know like, when to start running? Well, I mean, we run with a ball snap, but... It's all, it's all about how the play is, because we, our offense is run, we all have different routes and different play, and for all different plays. <clears throat> but it is all about how defense is set up and all about where the cornerback is lined up on us, if he's back, if he's off, or if he's zoning in. Okay, cool. Um, so, I'm asking everybody this, but do you think this season is going to be different? Without a doubt. Yeah? yeah? Of course. Why do you guys think that? Uh, well, for me, um, I believe that uh, the new system that, uh, that Coach Davis has implemented uh, is going to you know, change the way we play. Uh, we're really explosive, and uh, we have a no-huddle style offense in which we, uh, we just keep going, and we just get the signals from the sidelines, and we just you know, have a fast pace. Uh, so it's very different from uh, before. Okay. And can you describe one thing about off-season training that you would say is the most challenging? I mean, I would just say that the most, it's just, the most challenging part is probably waking up really early yeah. and on, in the mornings when, you, when you're expected to have a free summer, but it's just, it's good. It creates discipline and gets you ready for the season. And last question, what are you guys most looking forward to about this season? Winning. Winning. Yeah. Yeah, just the new attitude that we have this year. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, guys. High School's running back, Lenique Bumbry. <laughs> um, so I have a couple questions for you. My first question is um, something that I've always wanted to know about running backs is how they find holes in the defense to make their own. So can you describe that process a little bit for me? It was mostly just a, like offensive line, pushing the guys, like the gaps open for me. So I try to go to the open gap all the time. Okay. Okay. So is it like, I know my brother is a running back. He plays on at Columbia University. So he says that finding holes and being a running back is like looking for light, kind of. Do you like, would you describe it that way? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly like that. Okay. And um, what do you um, describe yourself as? A downhill back, a cutback runner, or an all around? I feel like I'm an all around back. Really? Why would you describe yourself that way? I just do everything like, to my best abilities. Like everything you think of, I'm just good at it, basically. All right. I'm not trying to hype myself up or anything. Just, okay. Just say I got it. All right, cool. Thank you. Wilson, who plays middle linebacker um, on the Herman High School football team. So I have some questions for both of you guys. Um, do you think this season will be different from last season? Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be different from last season. We got uh, 33 returning seniors, uh, most of them starters. We got a better attitude on the team, good coach. Uh, got a lot of things to look forward to this year in terms of positivity. Okay, awesome. And what about you? Basically, the same thing you just stated. <laughs> okay. Okay. And can either of you describe off-season training for me? Hard. A lot of running, basically. Sprints every day. Right. Constantly running to everything. To drills, to water. Yeah. A lot more. You think of all season, you think of yeah. Basically, getting in condition for the season so that we're uh, the hardest working out there, so we're the last on the field with the most energy. Okay. Awesome. And what are you guys most looking forward to this upcoming season? South Lakes. South Lakes. Yeah, it's gonna be a blowout. So. 
Stay right. tuned. Hey. Good All right. Good cool. Right. Thank you yeah. guys so much. All, All right. right. <laughs> I was so scared because I didn't know what was going to happen. Oh, I, I, just, I just... I was like, there, Ali kept talking, and I was like, okay, okay, no, Ali, shut up. No, we were having riveting conversation. And then Jack and I would have this instinct to go, all, all right. right. Yeah, they were, <laughs> like, psychic. so profesh. But, yeah, we were talking about if you could have a superpower, what would it be? Because our chemistry teacher... Actually, you were the only one talking. Yeah, you oh, were actually yeah. the only person talking about it. We were just kind of going, yeah, okay. But you, we were talking... You were said like what if you had the power to change stuff into lakes and i was like i would want to be invisible like mr petrus said <laughs> all right and the lakes thing goes way back okay okay so anyway ali is here so ali this week has been filled with uh new shows yes and also new seasons of old shows and there have been some you know interesting things i the only thing i've seen so far because it was on the dvr is modern family I have to say, I wasn't that impressed with okay. the new s episode. I mean. Yeah, we have a lot to talk about. Also, new stars. My mom killed it. Okay. 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 I yeah. just wanted to say that. Yes. Anyways. It was, was great, great having her. She's, was a lot. She's really nice. Or okay. A lot of fun. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, Big Brother ended um, on Thursday. The, the Thursday show night. altogether or just no, the season? No, just the season. Yeah, I think that show is really stupid. Okay. Let's get personal. To now, if you stupid. haven't seen it... Wait, like, 10 seconds real quick. I'm going to say who won. Derek won. Anyways, you can, like, you can look at me now. This is me inviting you back. Anyways, it was so boring because of that. From day one, you knew who was going to win. The show is usually good because you know how, like, all families sort of have shows that they watch together? Yeah. Uh, my family, we watch uh, Modern Family, Big Brother... And I'm starting to get everyone into Grey's Anatomy. That's, like, my goal. <laughs> um, but my dad talks through it. Anyways. <laughs> okay, anyways. <laughs> Your dad um, seems like the person you're talking to. What are they doing? <laughs> dissecting this man? <laughs> Very true. I'm sorry, Dad. He's going to watch this, and I'm going to be grounded now. No, don't. Anyways, no, on to TV. So, yeah, Big Brother was bad, and even past season people who played like alumni that are really famous within the game they were even like this season sucks because all the guys sort of worked with each other and they sent all the girls home one by one they only kept one girl and this girl was an idiot and that's the <laughs> only reason why they kept her what why what i, I forgot the premise of the show so yeah, they're like I'm, they I'm, all live in a house yeah right? so like about quickly, quickly. 20 strangers are put inside of a house the big brother is the camera that is watching them and oh, there's what? different variables that's what big brother is it's like people are watching why them. don't they call it camera stuff. No, it I became mean, like, it became a here. term in the early 2000s. Okay, thank you. Like you can look helpful. that up inside the dictionary and it would be big brother, older male sibling and then it would be like camera watching you or I got And it. then I got yeah, it. they strange. play games and they almost vote like survivor who they want to go home uh, if oh, they're yeah, on the yeah. block. Okay, and that stuff. now it's bringing them. Anyways, and they have different challenges, yeah, right? Yeah, and it's also a CBS show, so yeah. Uh, Sunday, though, new TV, uh, speaking of CBS, Madam Secretary is coming on at 8 o'clock. Um, I guess if you're really into political shows, it, it should be good. I don't think it will be, like, Scandal, though. I think Scandal's more scandalous. <laughs> this looks more serious. Maybe it'll be along the lines of The Good Wife. I don't know much about this show, though, honestly. Um, Monday night, Scorpion on CBS at 9, and then Gotham at 8 on Fox. Now, have any of you guys seen Gotham at all? No, no but I know that it has to do with Batman. Yes. Who's in and that show? Oh, is it, um, oh, I, because I saw something about it. It's Jada, um, Smith, right? Yeah. She's in the there's, show, right? There was a, some huge hype about it, and I'm curious as to what it is, because it's like a, a backstory yeah. of Batman. I'm not sure. It looks really interesting. Yeah, I, I think it's a different take on. I think it's more about the city and not so much. Batman. Yeah, and like, that's what yeah. I heard. That's yeah, I mean, the trend last year I saw is major networks are now like focusing on these old comic books mm -hmm. and trying to make them into shows. We saw it first with um, 
Agents of Shield, and then and there's Arrow, yeah, um, the Flash, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they're trying to like, I guess, being nerdy is cool. That was sort of like a style thing too, to wear glasses yeah. and be dorky. So I guess now TV is trying to be dorky. <laughs> Besides that, another group of dorks, Scorpions, about a, a bunch of people who have like really high IQs. And they sort of like work for the government and do this crazy stuff. Yeah, um, personally, I thought that the trailer looked really stupid. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Well, let's think that the show will probably. It, be it may be great no, though. Um, Catherine McPhee's in it, and she was in Smash, and she was on American Idol. Whatever She's happened cool. to Smash? Smash it got canceled. Broke my heart. Sorry, Only that. two seasons, so. Anyways, coming back to Mondays on October 27th, I'm pumped about this. Two Broke Girls, that show is hilarious. Is it really that funny? It's like, really funny. Like, what's so funny? funny? Like, are they like, broke I don't know. and that's what's funny? Anyways, like, that's not why it's funny. The brunette is hilarious, and I strive to be Max, whatever her <sighs> character this last name is. Anyways, besides that, a show that people are very skeptical of doing well on Tuesdays on ABC selfie is going to be on at eight o'clock. Mm, that does Kay. not look appealing. You know what? To me. At this I late in the game, I could it. see. I could see if they just let's. I know you're not supposed to judge a book by its title or by its cover, but I'm judging this thing because selfie. I could see if this was maybe a year ago. That might have been kind of cool and hip. Now it's stupid. Well, I mean, They're, you <laughs> can only write a script so fast and get it in production know, and audition all these but like, people. Selfie. But like, what do they do? Take selfies the no, entire show? No, it's supposed to have, like, modern, like, like our problems. It's, like, going to be a sitcom -y type thing. But I do they see... They have selfies. No, no, it's not about that. I don't know if you ever saw the Rebel Wilson show. Oh, yeah. yeah. It I was saw it because really, it was always after It was film. bad. Though. That was awful. She was like... Like, oh, episodes I'm, I'm were good, about like, but oh, honestly, man. I felt like whenever I watched the Rebel Wilson show, someone could follow me around for a whole day with a camera and find it just as funny. So I think Selfie will be like, okay, I don't know if it will last. Mm -hmm. But anyways, a show that I do think will last is on Wednesdays, Blackish. It's on ABC at 9.30. Is that racist? No, no, it's not. It's actually very intellectual if you think of it this way. It's sort of talking about like our cultural barriers and how we That's think of black hmm. people in a certain way and like white people in a certain so way. So it is about race. It is about race, but it's from a comedic light. Mm -hmm. But there's also these undertones that everyone can take to heart and not be so stereotypical when we when it comes to race right, and it's stuff. That is interesting. I'm actually kind of interested yeah. in that one. Yeah, right. I made it sound so much you. smarter than it actually is. Okay, well. <laughs> um, I feel proud of myself for that. Anyways, Thursday, Grey's Anatomy and Scandal's coming back to ABC. I'm so pumped. Grey's Anatomy, it's the first season without Sandra Oh because she left last season. Oh, yeah, that's the only person I ever knew in this show. Um, because, there's, like, so many, there's so many other good people. It's, it's Now, are it's these shame. people dropping out or are their characters intentionally killed um, or Sandra die? Sandra Oh, I think she wanted to move on to other yeah. projects because I think they're... So similar, I always think of when people want to move on, I think of... Uh, um, uh, Steve Carell moving out of the office. Yeah. That was big, you know, a prominent role y yeah. leaving. If you haven't seen Grey's Anatomy and you want to know if she was killed or not, I'm going to say what happened to her real quick. So just, I'll invite you again when I'm done. Uh, she just left, like, eloquently. She went to, like, a new hospital. No, she started her <laughs> own uh, practice um, in another country. So she may make an appearance this season. Come back in. Anyways, <laughs> Scandal's coming back for its fourth season. Very promising. Isn't that with Carrie Washington. Yes. Okay. And Carrie Washington's in everything right now. She's like the girl yeah, getting is. the job done. Everyone wants to be Carrie Washington. Someone who was on Grey's Anatomy and Private Practice, uh, she will be... What are these health shows? Anyways, she played a doctor. She <laughs> will be starring in Bad Judge on NBC. What is that? 
I usually like NBC programming because of Brian. It Williams, looks but. hilarious. Actually, this show actually looks funny, and I'm totally going to watch it. She's like a bad judge. It's like bad teacher. Oh, my God. NBC copied CBS. I did not <laughs> see that till now. Um, yeah, it's basically a bad judge, like bad teacher. Oh, my God. The trailers are so close together. Revelations right now, guys. Yeah. Um, Do we clap? I don't know. I Jack, like you're doing that thing where you just kind of like... I'm not zoning in. I'm interested. <laughs> I'm going really, really um, out. And then another show on Thursday night that I actually want to watch is A to Z. That's that love show. That's with, on NBC, right? Yeah, it's on NBC. And I, that, The idea that kind of reminded me of like mixology. Mm, it's different. Know, it seems like, more like... You, it seems almost how I met your mother. You, like, you know that they're going to end up together, mm -hmm. but you just don't know how the relation will go. It's all mm -hmm. these twists yeah. and turns. And I think, like, right now, that's, like, my thing, like, romantic comedies. Like, I want to just watch chick flicks all day <laughs> right now. <laughs> Besides that, I can't wait that, to see, hear something that I don't Final like. season of Parenthood is, like, it's ending this okay. season so um, on Thursday. Now, on Friday... I know you like Shark Tank and all the daylight stuff. I love that stuff. show. Dun, 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 <laughs> James dun, dun, is dun, like dun, a... Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, Shark Tank dun, is a great dun, show. Dun, My dun, mom dun, does dun, not get the premise of that show. I think it's very useful. It's real. I've actually bought some of the stuff that's been on that show. I have too. I bought the Euro Club where you can pee in the club when you're out on the golf course. What? what? You bought that? <laughs> oh, my God. It was for my dad. <laughs> anyway, keep going. I was gonna say that I bought the guitar app where it shows you songs. I ended up paying also that Groove app, Book. We love it Groove like Book. Forty bucks. Groove Book, I, you know, is the thing where you get pictures every month for three ninety nine. It's a great deal. You get a oh. hundred pictures printed from your cell phone for three ninety nine. Oh, you bought more stuff than I did. I and like, we got like some other thing. stuff too, but. Man. Okay, that's the best one I've heard so far. Um, what else? And then, oh, how about on Friday, Amazing Race? That is also my yes, favorite show. Yes, yeah. Are you, you going to talk about that? Do you just sit at home and watch TV all Friday night? I, Friday night. But just talk about Sunday. Amazing Race. You've okay. talked about Amazing Race. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, my God. Anyway, I love the Amazing Race. I we, We've been watching previous seasons recently, you know, to kind of kind of get an idea. But anyway, it's been very good. I love the Amazing Race. They travel all around the world, and they have different challenges to do in each place. It's really cool. I'm not into like the whole reality television. Really, thing. I just, love reality. I don't like reality television. Oh, okay, what's next? Um, yeah, uh, Grimm is on NBC on Fridays. It was written by the person who wrote Buffy. It's a great show if you're into stuff like that. Um, besides that, one of my favorite shows, American Horror Story, is going into <sighs> its fourth show. season. Um, it's, it's gonna such air a good show. October eighth. Um. It's FX, right? Yeah. Yeah, FX. And it, this time it's going to take place in the 1950s, 1952 to be exact, in Jupiter, Florida. It's called Freak Show. Hopefully it won't suck like Asylum. Okay. Do you agree with that? Whatever that is. Yes or no? I like them. I like okay, them. Okay, anyways. And then something um. that I think looks great. The pilot aired yesterday. What How to Get Away with Murder on yes. ABC. That does with, sound good. What does with that With Viola mean? Davis. The, she, she, you're like an NBC programming. I like the ABC. I like I, the I, ABC. I, I, I have a couple of my ABC shows. Anyways, mm -hmm. it's CBS, about... CBS, I do my news... 60 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> I, I knew what you were doing and I wanted to yell that, but I knew I couldn't. Anyways, um, Viola Davis plays a college professor and she's very confident and strong and she teaches people... This is how. Oh, get yes, away that's with murder. it. Yeah, but I um, don't. Yeah, I was trying do, to reenact yeah, yeah. her voice, but I can't do it. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, and it was written by Sandra Rhymes, and Thursday night on ABC is basically Sandra's night because she wrote Grey's Anatomy, Scandal, and How to Get Away with Murder. She is making some big bucks. On besides, Thursday night, folks. Yeah, also, besides that, Big Bang Theory, <laughs> they are killing it. All the characters oh. except for Raj got a million dollars per an episode this year on their contract. Per episode? Per an episode. How, how much is that? That's probably like 22 episodes, 20 million. Yeah. yeah. Not as much as Big Bang Theory is much. making bank, guys. It's a great <laughs> show. Anyways, that is oh. it for me. One All last right. thing. My favorite TV show is okay. Castle. Uh, it comes out on Monday. Hey, sir. Okay, my Mark favorite is Shaq. Just kidding. Shack? Bad joke, bad pun. Get it? She, she likes castle. I like a shack. 
Oh. Okay, Castle. Anyway, castle isn't nothing. about like an actual castle. It's like it's a okay, detective show. But, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it has a pin. Like. Yeah. It's so yeah, cool. Great. All right, Allie. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Enjoy. Go Hulu. Go on Hulu. Check your DVR on demand. Check those shows Netflix. out. Netflix. <laughs> Is, does Netflix release the shows fairly soon? I'm yeah. so mad at that point. They took off Law & Order SVU, like the first okay. couple of seasons. Right. All right, well, that looks like all the time we have for today. I'm Jack Norcross. And I'm Emily Ann. And remember to follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and head on over to HerndonLive.com. And we will see you next, or two weeks, live from the parade route yeah. outside so it be very exciting have a great three-day weekend if you live in fairfax county everyone and we'll see you uh, right back here in two weeks good night everyone good night